Thanks for joining everyone. It's Andrew from iDownloadBlog. We're going to jump right in and check out all of the new features and changes in iOS 10 Beta 5. First up, the locking of the phone. When you do, there is a new noise when you actually lock the phone. The haptic feedback is still gone, but there is a new noise. It sounds something like this. Still faint, but that gives you an idea of what it sounds like. Basically similar to a door closing. The keyboard noises also in this beta are a bit louder than they have been in the past. A very welcome change this beta is that when you restart your phone, you no longer have to enter your password before buying or downloading an app. Before, you would restart your phone and you'd have to verify and enter your password for your Apple ID. Now you can simply use Touch ID right out of the gate when you restart your phone. So it's a very welcome change for anyone out there who does that often, uh, like I would, and I hated typing on my really long, complicated password. So really nice change there iOS 10 brings digital touch from the Apple Watch over to the iPhone inside of Messages. If you open up the digital touch screen into full screen, there's now a little splash screen similar to what we saw in the last beta for Control Center. Now we see those kind of instructions here inside of Messages. It'll explain all the different gestures and things you can do, such as sending animated kisses, heartbeats, heartbreaks, and fireballs. You can dismiss the screen by tapping on the X in the top left hand corner. Inside of Control Center, there was also another small tweak. When you wanted to output audio, you would have this kind of stylized speaker here or headphones here. Now it's been switched to this little triangle with a bunch of arcs going around it. You can find that not only here inside of Control Center, you can see it inside of the music app as well. Widgets are a big thing in iOS 10 and there was a very small tweak to these. If you notice inside of my little widget view here, any third party widgets like my August app, that now has a new darker background compared to the first party options, which are all that white frosted color. Inside of the photos app, Apple now had to reprocess all the images for the facial recognition. So if you go to albums and go to people, you'll see this little screen looks something like this, letting you know, just has to reprocess all those images. Something wrong, just gonna have to do that in this new beta. The home app, it no longer really served much of a purpose inside of these settings. So that standalone line item inside of settings has now been removed. And those stock apps, before if you removed music, you could not play audio from certain apps, third party apps, that's now been fixed. So if music's removed, you can still play it. Pass update banners will no longer fail to show unless previous past notifications are first cleared from Notification Center. There was also an issue with Apple's iPhone 6S smart battery case. If you had that charging case on your phone, it would not work correctly. So that's been squashed and fixed in this beta. For those Apple TV users out there, there was a bug that prevented setting up an Apple TV using a tap to setup feature. That's been fixed now, so that works in this new beta for anyone who's setting up a new Apple TV in iOS 10. Inside of the phone app, this latest beta fixes a UI issue when making back-to-back -back emergency services calls. Before it would say 911 emergency call calling, now it just says 911 calling. In our last couple tidbits here, for those of you using Bluetooth low energy based hearing aids with their iPhones that is also connected to an Apple Watch, they should no longer hear occasional audio dropouts or skips. And while testing in-app purchases in the App Store sandbox, the first authentication dialog should no longer appear twice. Go ahead and subscribe to keep up with the latest changes in iOS 10 beta. And until next time, this is Andrew for iDownloadBlog.